Hello dear student, welcome to another video in Schools of Linguistics. Today we will be talking about uh, features of human language. This is another uh, second lesson in Schools of Linguistics. Uh, Hockett, uh, Charles Hockett, uh, talked about or came up with features of human language or they are also called uh, design design features of human language. Okay? Design features of human language. Charles Hockett refers to things that all languages have in common as the design features of human language. Okay, so basically, uh, Charles tried to characterize the uh, things that are all common in languages. So these features that Charles came up with exist in all languages. Okay. No exceptions, of course. Uh, the first uh, feature is called the vocal auditory channel. That is, sounds emitted from the mouth and perceived by the auditory system. A speaker produces language by making sounds with the mouth and the listener perceives that language by hearing it with the air or ears. Okay, so Basically, we have vocal and auditory. So we have the mouth and the ears. Okay, so that when, when we produce language, when we talk, we produce language in, term, in the form of sounds. Okay, these sounds are produced from the mouth and perceived by the listener from the ears. Okay, so the, this one is. is uh, is understood even even from the title we have vocal auditory channels so. all right so let's move on to another uh, feature which is called broadcast transmission and directional reception okay human language signal is sent out in all directions while it is perceived in a limited direction in other words the sounds perpetuate as waveforms that expands from the mouth in all directions, and the listener hears those sounds as coming from a particular direction. So basically, this feature um, explains that when we talk, we send out uh, language in the form, of course, of sound waves, and these sound, well, the same, uh, sound waves. Um, Go or expand in all in all directions. Okay, so they don't go in one direction. Okay, people around you will all hear you because the same well, the same uh, the sound waves or the wave forms of the sounds expand in all directions. So people all will hear you. So the listener, if you are talking, for example, to only one person, there is only one person around you. The listener. Here's those sound as coming from one particular di direction. So they know if the listener, even if he's not looking at you, they would know which direction those sounds come from. So the direction of sounds is uh, can be, I mean, can be uh, spotted. They can know where these sounds come from. Okay, even if the sound waves span in all directions. Okay, so the transmission of these sounds expand in all directions. However, the, the listener can detect which direction these sounds uh, come from. Another, uh, we have here another uh, feature is called the, the rapid fading of the sound waves. So the sound waves fade. Okay, you can also understand the meaning of this uh, feature by the title, so there is much in the title that can be understood. So we have the fade, so the fade, and we have sound waves. Sound waves fade rapidly. Okay, so human language signal does not persist over time. It does not stay when we talk, when we produce language. The 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 signal or the sound waves that we produce do not um, persist in in the air. Do not stay uh, in the air. For a very long time, speech waveforms fade rapidly and cannot be heard or retrieved after the fade. For example, 
it is no possible it is not possible okay it is not sorry have to add t it is not possible to say hello and have someone hear it after an hour okay so when we talk we uh, transmit okay sound waves we produce sound waves these sound waves when they spread in the air after a very short time they fade they disappear okay that is the meaning of this feature and then we have interchangeability the speaker can both receive and broadcast the same signal or differently the speaker can be a listener and a speaker in turn taking situation so when you are talking at the same time you use language as a speaker you produce language and then when the other person talks to you you receive that language you speak and you receive so you are a listener and a speaker at the same time so this is the interchangeability of languages so language is interchangeable okay in the sense that we produce language and then we are listeners of this and in this case and then we perceive language and then we take the turn of being a listener okay <clears throat> so we have total feedback uh, another picture the sender of a message uh, also perceives the message that is you hear what you say the speaker can hear themselves while producing the speech and thus can monitor the language performance as they proceed so if we look at the title we have again feedback okay this means that when when uh, when we speak we produce language we send a message okay in the form of sound waves and then when we uh, send this language when we talk we produce this language we can at the same time monitor we edit and monitor our language for example you talk to someone and then you make a mistake or some or, the, or anything so you make an error or a mistake and then you you correct yourself so you correct you monitor the language okay you say for example you're talking about something you say oh, i'm sorry i didn't mean that so you, you are monitoring your language you give feedback you give feedback to to yourself and then we have special, uh, specialization so the organs used for producing speech are uh, specially adapted to perform the task okay for example if we make a closure of our lips and let the air burst after the closure of lips the process will bring out a sound p okay you have you need another slush after p okay p between between slushes okay the process will bring out the sound p in any part of the world okay so any speaker any language speaker when they speak if we want if they close for example their, their their lips and let the air burst out they would produce the sound p this means that each organ so if we look at our vocal tro uh, vocal tract which produces language each organ in in our vocal tract is specialized in producing a certain sound okay so the the teeth for example uh, with the the lips produce certain sounds okay <laughs> okay and the lips produce p for example okay the blade okay the tongue when it touches palate it they produce palatals okay so each organ or articulators okay if you, if you want to use the uh, this term so which is used in articulatory phonetics phonetics each each articulator so we have articulators when they match okay they produce certain sounds okay when they move they produce sounds each sound is produced in uh, in, in its uh, specialized place in each in, in its uh, organ so the organs are specialized in producing certain sounds and then we have semanticity uh, semanticity means there is a fixed relationship between a signal and a meaning 
That is, specific signals can be matched with specific meanings. Okay? Uh, there is a, a fundamental aspect. This is, okay, this is a fundamental aspect of all communication systems. For example, in French, the word cert means a white crystalline, a crystalline, sorry, a white crystalline substance consisting of sodium and chlorine atoms. The same substance is matched with the English word salt. So the, the basic point of this feature is that the meaning of words is the same in all languages. The word salt is made up is made up of white crystalline substance which consists of sodium and chlorine atoms in French and it is it is consist of these okay these um, these atoms also uh, sodium and chlorine so these it is consist of the same thing in English in Spanish in all languages okay so we cannot find for example uh, the same word for example salt in French and salt in English and then these two substan substances are made of something uh, different. So the meaning of these words is the same because they are made up of the same thing. Uh, and then we have arbitrariness. There is no relationship between a signal and its meaning. That is, the signal is related to the meaning by convention, but has no inherent relationship with the meaning okay so basically um, arbitrariness means that a word each word okay if you take any word in 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 english or spanish or in french or any language has nothing to do with its meaning okay for example the word chair if we, if we look at the word chair right take a piece of paper write the word chair and compare it to the object chair so it is no relationship, just conventional. Okay, one day they agreed upon this meaning. Okay, they gave this meaning to this word. So they said, Okay, you see this object that has four legs, we're going to call it a chair. Okay, so this is what is called uh, what is meant by arbitrariness. There is no reason why a four legged domestic uh, canine should be called dog or chien. For example, dog or chien in French or in English. Uh, has nothing to do with a four any four-legged animal, which is a dog. So the word dog and that animal that we have, you know, a pet that we have a home, we have at home, for example, they don't. The meaning does not match the the word. So we just conventional. They agreed upon the use of this meaning to uh, the signal. Uh, of course, there, are, there is an exception. We have onomatopoeic words. Onomatopoeic words are exceptions. A word such as meow, there is a word in English, it's called meow. If you check the dictionary, you will find it. Means that uh, it's pronounced like the sound it refers to. Okay, if you saw, the, for example, the cat meows. Why meows? Because if you hear the cat, they pronounce, cats pronounce this meow as it is written so we have meow okay so you hear the word has a logical uh, relationship with the meaning so in, in case of onomatopoeic words the relationship between the signal and the meaning is not arbitrary is, is based on logical uh, sense okay and then we have discreteness means that language can be said to be built up from discrete units. Example for names in human language. Okay, this is for example, a speaker will perceive a sound as either p or a b, but not something else in between. Okay, so each unit in language, for example, each phoneme in language is discrete. Okay, so the, the phonemes they do not look like each other. So the meaning, okay, sorry, the, 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 the sounds are discrete units different from each other okay so there is no sound in between if we take for example the words p and b you cannot pronounce 
or come up with a, with a sound that is in between these sounds. Okay, if you do, then it would it would be just your your mispronunciation. You only mispronounced one of these uh, phonemes. That is another another uh, in between sound doesn't exist. This is the same for other sounds. We have, for example, sound A and the sound E. So there is A and there is E. There is no E or A or something. So the the units are discrete. Okay. And then we have displacement. We use language to talk about things or events that are distant in time and space. For example, the human language allows us to uh, or allows speakers or allows allows us to talk about the past, present, and future. Also, human languages allows or allow us or allow speakers to use language in different parts of the world. So this displacement means that you can use language to talk about anything that happened in the past, to talk about anything that is happening now, and you can talk about anything that happens in the future. So say, for example, in 10 years uh, from now, for example, I will be uh, married, I will have children, how... So we are using language in the future. Okay, And we can also talk about uh, your use language even in different parts of the world, different places. I can say, I can talk here, for example, where I am now, and move, go to America, and then talk, and then go to someone else and talk. So you can use language in different parts of the world, and you talk about anything that happens in different parts of the world, and in different uh, time aspects. Present, uh, uh, past, future, etc. And then we have productivity. This feature means language allows speakers to come up with novel sentences never heard before. Okay, so we have you need to add produce. I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, I forgot to 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 write it. We have language allows speakers to produce. Okay, produce novel sentences never heard before. We can produce potentially in an infinite number of different messages by can be combining the elements of uh, language differently. So we have productivity. Languages are productive, okay, in the sense that you can come up with uh, different, each time you can come up with different, different sentence. Okay, you can uh, come up with a sentence and then you add some elements, grammatical elements, other words, and then the, you make your sentence longer, then you add other words, and then you make your sentence even longer, and this sentence may uh, have never been uh, produced before, okay? And then we have traditional transmission. Means that language is passed on from one generation to the other through a process of teaching and learning. Other linguists claim that the underlying capacity for language is human, in human is genetic. So it's true that uh, languages are predisposed, so, uh, the, there is this universal grammar, something that we are born with that helps us to learn and acquire any language. However, we uh, pass language through the two generations. Okay, so our children, for example, learn languages from us. The, we teach them, we help them, we show them, then they learn in uh, language from us, and then we learn language from our parents. Our parents learn language from others or at school so we learn it we can learn it also at school languages so languages are uh, passed on through generations <clears throat> and then we have duality of patterns duality of patterning means that large numbers of meaningful signals meaningful units or signals morphemes of words for example are produced from a small number of meaningful units okay for example okay so a large number of, of meaningful signals meaningful sounds for example phonemes we combine phonemes to create morphemes then we combine morphemes to create words then we combine words to create sentences okay so we have duality of patterning so small units are created uh, or big units okay 
uh, large units are created from small units and then this goes on large number of meaningful signals produced from a small number of meaningful units phonemes we we, we get we, we combine phonemes to create morphemes okay we combine again morphemes to create words and then uh, etc uh, thank you very much for your intention. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this video and catch you in the next one